Family Theater presents Robert Stack, Jack Gregson, and Lillian Byer. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, brings you Robert Stack and Lillian Bayef in The Spy by James Fenimore Cooper. To introduce the drama, your host and narrator, Jack Gregson. Thank you, Gene Baker. Tonight, Family Theater honors the anniversary of George Washington's birth by paying tribute to the unsung heroism of those whose courage and loyalty to Washington in his struggle for independence went unrecognized. The Spy by James Fenimore Cooper tells the story of such a man. His courage was known to a very few, for success in time of war hangs by the thin thread of secrecy. Thin because secrecy and security are forever open to violation. On the surface, it could not be doubted that the spy captured near Tarrytown represented a real threat to the American cause, for the order for his arrest had issued from General Washington himself. After prolonged search through the valleys of New York, Captain Duncan Hollister of Washington's Continental Army had captured him as he left the protection of the British lines and held him in a country inn for transport to the headquarters at West Point. And then, word was brought to Captain Hollister that the spy had escaped. Who was in charge of the prisoner, Sergeant? My orders were to double the guard. It was double, Captain Hollister. Then how was it possible for him to escape? He must have gone through the door to the basement room. But it was locked. He couldn't have opened it without a key. We found it open, sir, and the prisoner gone. Give the order to mount, Sergeant. Halt your men, Sergeant. But, sir, won't we pursue the spy into the woods? No, he's safe now. No man can travel these hills after dark, unless used to the passes. There's where this fellow has the advantage. Yes, sir. Prepare to halt! Troop up! Then he's gotten away, sir? Yes, he's gotten away. Perhaps if our army had more suitable prisons. An inn is no place to keep a prisoner... Oh, no, I'm inventing excuses for myself. There's no charge of negligence they can bring against you, Captain, for I can vouch, that sir... That he's possessed of supernatural powers? Does he have keys to open the locks in all our military establishments? When we've returned to West Point, I may perhaps gain leave to head another expedition after this elusive traitor. <laughs> And if you could provide me with a force of 50 men, General Arnold. Of course, Hollister. That would leave our garrison here below its usual complement of troops. But with the British under Clinton still in the north... Then I have your permission, General Arnold? You have my permission, Captain. I'm grateful, sir. Now, his disguise is reported to be that of an itinerant peddler. And he knows the countryside. But I have some knowledge of Westchester County myself. You see, friends of mine, the Hortons, are residents there. Mr. Horton and his daughter, Katie. It is early in the evening, but the sky over Westchester County is dark and signals the approach of a storm as a solitary traveler makes his way to the Wharton farmhouse, a lonely cottage overlooking the valley. He knocks at the door. Yes? Who are you, sir? My name is Harper. I seek refuge from the storm blowing up. You are a stranger, sir, and we live in hazardous times. My presence in your house will harm neither you nor your family. You have my word on that. Then come in, sir. It has never been my custom to turn a stranger from the door. Thank you. Tell me, to whom am I indebted for this hospitality? My name is Wharton. I live here alone with my daughter, Catherine. She's in the next room, making a few small purchases of a peddler. A peddler calling at this hour? Oh, Harvey Birch is more to be regarded as a friend of the family. We've always treated him as such. How many yachts this Katie, I wish you to meet our visitor, Mr. Harper. 
Mr. Harper, my daughter Catherine. How do you do, sir? A pleasure to meet you, Miss Wharton. And this is the family friend of whom I spoke, Harvey Birch. Mr. Birch, I hope I may have the opportunity of examining your wares. I am at your service, sir. At the moment, Mr. Harper, you must warm yourself by the fire in the front room. And when you're rested, hey, Katie will see if a bit of supper Very remains. Kind. Harvey. Harvey, do you know Mr. Harper? What makes you ask that, Katie? Here now, this bit of calico may be to your taste. I could have sworn a look of recognition passed between you. It's that imagination of yours, Katie, why it even imagines dangers where none exists. How can you keep saying there's no danger when a spy is known to be lurking somewhere out there? Katie, you fear a man who means you no harm. You do him a grave injustice. It is because he means harm to our cause that I fear him. Perhaps you can understand it for the simple reason that... Well, that... That I owe allegiance to no cause? Is that what you were about to say? I didn't mean to hurt you, Harvey. You keep looking out of the window, Katie, into the valley. If the spy, wherever he is, had the information I have in this letter, he'd be out of this district tonight. What do you mean? Uh, what information? Do you remember Duncan Hollister? The captain you met in Philadelphia? Yes. I remember hearing you speak of him. Is he coming to visit you again? This time at the head of a detachment of men to hunt the spy. Does uh, his letter say when he plans to arrive? Oh, yes, this evening. He should be in the valley by now. I... I understand that this spy escaped him once. Once, perhaps. But not a second time. What are you doing, Harvey? Uh, just gathering these things into my pack. Uh, Mr. Harvey asked to... Mr. Harper asked to see my wares. I must show them to him before I leave. noticed that Harvey's behavior has been very strange tonight? Oh, I don't know what you mean, my dear. Why, he and Mr. Harper have been holding a whispered conversation by the fire for the last half hour. No, Mr. Harper is making some purchases, I believe. In all this time, Mr. Harper has purchased nothing. Oh, that is strange. Yeah, apparently, they've noticed your uneasiness. They're coming this way. Now that I've completed my transaction with Mr. Harper, I must be on my way. Oh, leaving us, Harvey? Yeah, we've had very little of your company tonight. The rain is letting up, sir. I must be moving on. I am afraid it is I who have kept Mr. Birch from your company, going through the contents of his pack with him. What a pity, Mr. Harper. You were able to find nothing to your liking among his ways. Oh, the fault is mine, Katie. I've been a peddler such a short time, I'm poorly stocked. Well, I must stay no longer. Good night, sir. Good night, Katie. I'll see you to the door, Harper. Oh, there's no need, Katie. It's my pleasure. Harvey, I wish to talk to you. I... I've aroused unpleasant suspicions in your mind? Indeed you have. Your meeting here with Mr. Harper was prearranged. Trust me, Katie. There are many things that are warming to the heart. One of these is love. Another is simply trust. I ask you to trust me, Katie... No matter what your suspicions may be, no matter what you may learn of my conduct. Harvey, what awful secret are you hiding? Don't ask me. Only trust me. Good night, Katie. His heart heavy within him, but his senses alert for danger. Harvey Birch made his way swiftly from the cottage, trying to keep ahead of the clouds that were moving rapidly to and gradually uncovering the light of the moon. Back at the cottage, Mr. Wharton stood at the window, looking out at the calm that had fallen over the valley. And then he turned to his daughter. Katie, there's a troop of horsemen turning off the road. It may be Duncan. Oh, Father, it may be Duncan. <laughs> we'll soon know, my dear. Uh, Mr. Harper, huh? you may have the opportunity to meet our friend, the young lieutenant. Father, he's a captain now. Please, try to remember. <laughs> oh, yes, a captain now. That's important. Captain Hollister. Well, upon my soul... The young lieutenant himself. Oh, father. <laughs> and now a captain, I understand. There, he's made it right. <laughs> come in, come in. I'm glad you came to see me. I trust your daughter as well, Mr. Watt. Oh, then you remember my daughter. Catherine, called Katie. Indeed. I remember your daughter with much affection. Hello, Katie. Duncan. And this is our guest, Mr. Harper, uh, Captain Hollister. How do you do, Captain? How do you do, sir? I'm certain I've seen your face somewhere before. It's familiar. And you are the young captain who has sworn to capture the traitor spy. Indeed. It has become a, a point of honor with me, sir. 
We've been in the vicinity but one hour. But already my patrols are scouring the countryside. I'll not rest... But you'll at least have a cup of tea. <laughs> yes, yes, I'll have a cup of tea. Excuse me, please, I'll get the tea. Please. The moon will help us in our search tonight. We may have him by morning. You see, what he doesn't know is that we've learned his disguise. That of a peddler. What's wrong, well, Kitty? Well, nothing. Really, nothing's wrong. Yes, there is. Your hands are trembling. Here, here, sit down over... What's this? Here on the window seat. Oh, some muslin, a few pins, a bit of calico, nothing more than that. But just the articles that could have come from a peddler's pack, aren't they? Katie? Oh, Duncan. You're hiding him. No. He's been here. Now, now, wait a moment, young captain. You don't mean to say that poor Harvey Birch... If this fellow, Harvey Birch, is poor, then King George is a bad paymaster. Oh, no, it doesn't seem possible. I'll have to order a search of your house, Mr. Wharton. But, Duncan, I give you my word, he's not here. I'll answer the door. What is it, Sergeant? Captain Hollis, sir. The peddler's spy has been captured. Excellent. Where? A patrol sighted him leaving this cottage, sir, not ten minutes ago. I see. Duncan, you must believe me. I knew nothing. Let's have a look at the prisoner, sir. Oh, Duncan! <laughs> Duncan! <laughs> no doubt he'll be back, my dear. <laughs> Sir, the moon is hidden behind clouds again. Never mind, Sergeant. As long as a spy peddler is our prisoner, he can't avail himself of the darkness. He escaped me once. I should be justified in ordering his execution tonight. Surely George Washington will convene a trial for me. Our commander-in-chief has already condemned you. I think not. You must hold me first! He's <laughs> There's an embankment at the side of the road. He's managed to roll over it. No. No, he won't escape me this time. But there are only woods down there. Well, follow him into the woods. He can't get far with his hands tied. Abandon your horses in the road. Every man after the spy on foot. <laughs> you've, you've come to question us, Duncan? No. No, I haven't come to question you, Katie. May I come in? Of course. Now, I'm surprised you should want to enter this house, since it's known to have harbored one of the most notorious spies in the enemy service. Katie, I'm a beaten man. He escaped from us, you know. We searched the hills on foot throughout the night all the next day. Katie, he's somewhere in those hills. And he knows those hills, of course, better than anyone around here. Still, given time, I'd have found him. But this morning, orders arrived for me. I've come to say goodbye, Katie. Oh, Duncan. You're returning to West Point? My orders were to appoint a second in command to continue the search. I myself have to leave at once on a secret mission for General Arnold, our commander at West Point. I understand very little of what part I'm to play, but I must proceed at once. I've memorized my orders, Katie. I want you to burn them for me. I have no time to do it myself. Burn them? Duncan, why this need for secrecy? My duty is to obey the orders of a superior, not to question them, Katie. Oh, but Katie... At one point in this dispatch... Where is it? Oh, here it is. He says, The successful outcome of this mission will materially shorten the course of the war. Oh, Duncan. For that, Katie, we have the word of the commander of our garrison at West Point, General Benedict Arnold. There. That's a signal. A lantern in the road ahead. Up, boy. Whoa, whoa, boy. You're the gentleman I was supposed to meet here? The gentleman you were supposed to meet here was arrested two days ago in Terrytown. Seize him, men. No, I'm a captain in your own army. What's the meaning of this? Major Andre was treated to a speedy trial, and the meaning became quite clear, Captain. Major Andre? Who is Major Andre? The British officer you were to meet at this spot, in case you've forgotten his name. British officer? My orders from General Arnold. You were to give this Englishman safe conduct to West Point, where he and Arnold could negotiate for delivering our garrison there into the hands of General Clinton. No, no, there's been some mistake. Men make such mistakes when the price is high enough. And in turn, Captain, they pay a high price for their mistakes. Katie, what 
are you doing at the door? Father, there's someone out here. Oh, you mustn't be fearful of every sound, my dear. How can I help it when a traitor spy is still at large in the neighborhood? So that's how you've come to think of me, Katie. Harvey! Why, it's Harvey! I've come a long way. I must talk to you. The life of one you hold dear may depend on it. Harvey, what... Think carefully. Some papers were given to you, weren't they? Secret orders from General Arnold? Duncan's orders, yes. He gave them to me. Why? I was sure of it. He only said uh, he'd given them to friends to destroy for him, not wishing to implicate you at his trial. Trial? Now, Katie... Well, tell me what's happened to Duncan. Tell me. What did you do with the papers? Papers? He, he gave me the papers to burn. And if I can get them there in time... What did you do with them, my dear? He gave them to me to burn. Katie, you didn't... <laughs> oh, but surely General Arnold has copies of these orders. He can verify... I'm afraid little help is to be expected from Benedict Arnold who has already fled to the British to save his own skin. Oh, Duncan. Duncan. There, now, Katie. There, there, my dear. Oh, Father, this terror began for us the night... the night Mr. Harper knocked on our door. Oh, no, Katie. No, don't say that of Mr. Harper. He is your friend. Could Harper be reached at this moment, Duncan would be saved. Saved? Harvey, is he the power to save Duncan? Yes, if it were possible to get in touch with him. At the moment, it isn't, and time is running out. No. Katie, look into my face. I, I know you loathe the sight of it, but I must ask you this question. You love Duncan, don't you, Katie? I love him. Oh, yes, I love him. And what would you give to see him free? I'd... I'd give my life. Harvey, where are you going? Keep a watch at your window, Katie. Keep a close watch on the valley below. Food for you, Captain. Lucky thing your jail's an inn. Food's better than what's provided by army cooks. Put it down. Come here to the window. Now, Captain, there's another guard outside this room, so if it's a trick you're up it to... It isn't a trick. Come here. Look. That silhouette in the distance. I see the shapes of trees. It's lost their leaves. And on that rock. Is that a humpback tree? Well, no. Or is it a man? A peddler with his pack. Peddler? The spy, you fool. The spy. Put down that plate of food. Spread the alarm. I held him prisoner in this very room once. He escaped. I swore I'd see him captured. It may be my last day on earth, but by heaven, I will. No word. No word. Has he been captured? Did they catch him? Key turning in the lock. It's. It's. Quiet, quiet. Don't say a word. I can't take you out of here unconscious. Listen to me. Why do you think I revealed myself on that rock? Because I enjoy a good chase? No. Don't you see? Half the troops stationed around this inn are up there searching now. This uniform I wear belongs to one of them. You. You lured them away, got into this fellow's uniform so you could get in here to... to take care of me. Isn't it enough for you they're going to hang me? They'll hang you all right, unless you can outride them. How far do you think I'd get? The hills provide ample protection. Yes, for one who knows them, who's traveled them. I'd as soon die on the gallows as starve in the hills. You'll have a guide, Captain. A man who has been the hunted beast of these hills for three years past. Come. <laughs> Now you can see it, up there. Do you recognize that farmhouse, Captain? Katie. You brought me to Katie. She'll be watching from the window. If you can make it part way, she'll come and help you the rest of the way. But you're coming with me. It's you she wants to see, Captain. It's you she's waiting for. Then tell me, why have you done this for me? Risked your life to save mine. In saving your life, I save a life dear to her. 
Can I tell her that? No. Only tell her that soon, help from Mr. Harper will come. Help from Mr. Harper? What does that mean? It means you'll have aid, Captain, in proving your innocence and clearing your name. Birch, I feel closer to you than I have to any man. <laughs> you, my sworn enemy. One of those accidents of war, Captain. Yes, and what a lucky accident it was. I happened to be looking from the window and saw your form against the sky. I relied on no mere accident for that, Captain. When a man faces what may be his last day on Earth, the world becomes a kind of heaven to his eyes, and the air outside is sweet with a fragrance called freedom. I've spent such hours myself, you'll recall, and will spend many more, no doubt. But for me, the fields and sky are black at such a time. You see... You have friends to feel for you, and one who loves you. But I... That, Captain, is why you must hasten up that hill. You... You won't come with me? I have many more leagues to travel. And in that farmhouse up there, someone waits for you. Peddlers permitted here inside the tavern. It's the law. Transients peddling wares will do so on the public thoroughfares and highways. I know the law, kind sir, but may I not rest here for a while? Well, there are other inns further down the road. The peddler has perhaps earned his rest, mine host. And no man can keep moving forever. Oh, indeed, I'm aware of that, kind sir. But... If I ask to see this man's wares, may he show them to me in the dining room? Of mm -hmm. course, if you wish it. But only a short while. Uh, you you understand my position. Yes, of course. Sit down, Harvey. We'll be warm here, comfortable. And we can talk undisturbed. Yes, sir. Before giving you your instructions, I know you are anxious to learn news of the friends in whose behalf you acted so bravely. You ordered a search, then, of the effects of Arnold that Arnold left behind in his flight? Yes. A thorough search. And a copy of the order sent to Captain Hollister was found. The wording proved the young man could have had no possible knowledge that he was a part of Arnold's plot to betray West Point. Then he has been exonerated. His name has been cleared? Yes, yes. While the name of Harvey Birch... Can you tell me, does the captain's wedding day approach, do you think? I believe it follows shortly on this other happiness of theirs. And now, what follows for Harvey Birch? I'm awaiting my orders, sir. I have them here. But for the first time, I hesitate to give them to you. Have I failed somewhere in the performance of my duty, sir? Of all the men who have performed duties in the service of our country, I know few who have acted as unflinchingly, as unselfishly, as yourself. While posing as a spy of the enemy, you have uncovered information of great value to our cause, which speeds the hour of peace. But what does that hour hold for you? A man whose future is darkness, whose good name may never be redeemed. I await my orders, sir. They are contained in this packet. I'll drop it into your pack. Since the capture of Charleston by the British, the scene of our operations has shifted to the south. I will go where my orders take me. Very well. I'll write you a safe conduct. Have you made your purchase, good sir, of the peddler? Well, not entirely, mine host. How long does it take you, peddler, to show your wares? Leave him but another moment, if you will. Uh, very well. But no longer than that, peddler. And no hawking of your wares in front of my inn, either. Remember that. Read what I have written on that slip of paper. To whoever may read this document, circumstances of political importance which involve the lives and fortunes of many keep secret what this paper reveals. For years, Harvey Birch has been a faithful and unrewarded servant of his country. Signed, George Washington, Commander-in-Chief, Continental Army. Thank you, sir. Though man does not, may God reward you for your conduct, Harvey Birch.
The cause for which George Washington and his men fought was consecrated to liberty and belief in God. A belief in God that invoked the protection of divine providence upon their declaration of independence. A belief in God that extended throughout their constitution and subsequent amendments. The coins the American Congress caused to be struck bore the words, In God we trust. This same conviction, this same ideal, is what we of Family Theater wish to express each week. The dependence of all of us upon God. The simple, direct appeal of prayer to God can bring hope and happiness to everyone. Within your home, pray together as a family. Pray tonight and every night for God's help in all your undertakings. Reaffirm your dependence upon God. Heed our reminder that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood Family Theater has brought you Robert Stack and Lillian Bayef in The Spy, with Jack Gregson as your host. Ed Begley was heard as Harper, Walter Burke as Harvey Birch, Earl Lee as Wharton, Herbert Butterfield as Benedict Arnold, and Harry Bartell as the sergeant. This adaptation of James Fenimore Cooper's classic was written by Peter Rankin, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Jaime Del Valle. These family theater broadcasts are made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who have so unselfishly given of their time and talent to appear on the family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Gene Baker expressing the wishes of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater presents Arlene Dahl and Wendell Corey in the great classic Railroad and Churchyard. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is heard in the Philippines through the facilities of the Philippine Broadcasting Corporation, is broadcast to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service, and is released in Canada by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This is the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>